In this video, we'll discuss a very interesting question that we alluded to earlier, and it will be based on pure logic. Well, actually, there will be two related questions, and here they are. Suppose that we have two linear subspaces, and what we want to know is whether their union is also a linear subspace in its own right. And question number two, whether their intersection is also a linear subspace in its own right. Now, when we're talking about unions and intersections, we're really talking about set theory. And set theory is a fascinating subject, partly because it requires so little of its objects. As a matter of fact, it requires almost nothing at all. It just talks about sets. And it doesn't even define what a set is. Presumably, we all know what sets are. And I think that's kind of right. We kind of do know what a set of objects is. And we also know the sorts of things that we can do with sets of objects. And there is only a handful of things that we can do with sets. And one of them is the union. We can unite sets together. And, the, and another is the intersection. We can intersect sets. And there is only one or two more things that we can do with sets. But in this video, we'll focus only on unions and intersections. And I think that the best way to understand what a union is, at least on an intuitive level, is to look at a Venn diagram. And right now we're talking about sets of general objects and general sets. We're not necessarily talking about linear subspaces yet. That will come in just a moment. So on a Venn diagram, the two possibly overlapping sets, and here they are overlapping, are represented by circles. And their union is represented by the shaded region. And you can see what it is. It's the combination of the two sets together. It's the joining of the two sets, right? So if another way to describe it is that the union consists of elements that are either in one set or the other, or both. But they have to be in either one of the sets in order to be in the union. So the union is very inclusive. You only need to be in one of the sets in order to be in the union. If you look at this as a metaphor for Hollywood success, this tells you that in order to be successful in Hollywood, you have to be either good looking or talented. You could also be, be both, but in order to have success, you have to be either beautiful or talented and probably lucky that's beyond the scope of this discussion. So, when we're talking about unions, we're actually using the word or a lot. Even though, before you think about it, you might think that and is the term that symbolizes the joining of two things. It's one set and the other. Well, actually, once you get used to it, you will realize that or is a much better word. Because when we're talking about unions, it's best to talk about individual elements and their properties, and the properties that define the set. And this set is defined by being good-looking. And this set is defined by being talented. And you are successful in Hollywood if you are either if you are good-looking or talented. If you satisfy one property or the other. So it's very inclusive and therefore we use or. So in any case, it's the combination of the two sets. But the fact that we use the word or is important because we have also been talking about linear properties. These are properties that define these subspaces, or in the context of linear algebra, linear subspaces. And so it's important to realize how we're manipulating those properties in order to arrive at the union of two sets. And the conclusion is that you have to quote unquote, or the two properties. That's to use computer science terminology a little bit. Well, in any case, that's it for unions. Now let's talk about intersections. Now here's a Venn diagram for the intersection. And you can see that in order to be in the intersection, the object needs to be in both sets. So it has to be in this set and in the other set. So maybe this is what it takes to win an Oscar, perhaps. You have to be, or to be super successful in Hollywood. You have to be good looking and talented. So when we're talking about intersections, that's when we use the word and a lot. Intersection is a restrictive thing to do. 
This is a very inclusive thing to do, unions. Intersections are opposite, right? It's very stringent requirements. Here the requirements are relaxed. You have to be one or the other. Perhaps both is allowed as well. Here you have to be both, one and the other. So when we're talking about intersections, we'll be using the word and a lot. And when we're discussing linear properties as characterizing linear subspaces, the intersection of two linear subspaces will be the set of vectors that satisfies one characteristic property and the other. So these are the definitions of unions and intersections. And this completes our discussion of set theory. And if you're seeing it for the first time, it takes just a little bit of getting used to. But I think that what you've heard so far will be sufficient for the upcoming discussion. And here it is. Let's apply these concepts to subspaces in linear algebra. And of course, our discussion will start with geometric vectors. And once we understand what's going with geometric vectors, we'll immediately know what happens in all other vector spaces. So, What's a linear subspace in the space of geometric vectors? Well, in the plane, there is not much richness. You can either consider the whole plane or the zero vector or, to make it interesting, a straight line. So here's our one set of vectors. That's actually a subspace. So we'll now apply these pure ideas from set theory to the more uh, defined area of linear algebra and linear subspaces. And another one, I keep drawing the origin, but I know that it's best to learn to draw the two lines first. Well, that would have been pretty good. And then mark the origin. So here we now have two representative linear subspaces. And now is a great time to pause the video and try to apply these notions to this example. And to explain to yourself what's the union of these two subspaces and what's their intersection and to answer the question whether their union and their intersection are linear subspaces in their own right. All right, let's start with the union. Well, the union is the combination of these two lines. So in order to belong to the union, the vector needs to be either on one of these lines or the other. So these, all of these vectors belong to the union. Now is the union a vector subspace? Well, it's not, but it's actually interesting because it is actually closed under multiplication. If you take any one of these vectors and multiply them by a number, you will get another vector on the same line. So the resulting vector will once again be in the union because it will be either on this line or on this line or in the case of the zero vector, both. So this union of these two subspaces is actually closed under multiplication by numbers. But of course it is not closed under addition. Because if you were to add, let's say, these two vectors, the result would be right here. Not in the union. So the union has no chance of being a vector subspace. It has no chance of being closed under addition. We just demonstrated it with geometric vectors. But of course, it's very easy to show, uh, to see, I would say, that this logic applies to all vector spaces. So no chance, let me put a big fat X here, no chance of being a linear subspace. What about the intersection? Well, what's the intersection of these two subspaces? It's uh, kind of boring, it's just the zero vector. But wait a moment, the zero vector is actually a linear subspace in its own right. We've discussed this before, but let me repeat. Take any vector from this set, that can only be the zero vector, multiply it by a number, and voila, you have another vector from the same set because it's once again the zero vector. And the sum of any two elements from this set, which could, they can only both be the zero vector, is once again the zero vector, so once again in the set. So we have closure under addition and closure under multiplication. So the zero vector by itself is a linear subspace. So the intersection of these two subspaces is a linear subspace in its own right. So the intersection has a chance. Let's consider a slightly richer situation. For that, we have to go into three dimensions. 
And let's consider two planes that are subspaces, so they have to pass through the origin. And if you imagine this one subspace and another, they intersect, and their intersection is a straight line that also passes through the origin. So their intersection is once again a linear subspace in their own right, in its own right. And that, I think, is beginning to lead us to believe that the intersection is actually a subspace. And we're right. It is a subspace. So you can think about it in several different ways and maybe just get used to that idea. But you can actually explain it logically. And that's what we're going to do right now. We will explain logically why the intersection of two linear subspaces, in other words, the set of vectors that satisfy two different properties that are linear simultaneously. The result is another linear subspace. Well, here's how I would explain it. It will take just a little bit of writing just so that I have something to point to. So we already know about closure under multiplication, kind of. Let's just discuss closure under addition, although you should think through closure under multiplication by numbers on your own. But for closure under addition, suppose there are two vectors, v1 and v2, and both belong to the intersection. Well, what about their sum? Well, let's remember, so once again, I just want to make one note before I go through with this argument. It's one of those arguments that's so simple, you're better off thinking it through on your own. Because it's also very subtle. Because in this argument, if I just replace the word and with the word or, everything falls apart. So it's not immediately clear what it is that's the substance in this argument. And maybe all of it is the substance, but it's such a short argument once again. Just try to explain it to yourself. Uh, maybe pause the video and try to explain it to yourself. And then come back and see whether this makes sense. I think it's easier to explain it to yourself than to follow my explanation. But I'll give you my explanation anyway, and here it is. So we have two vectors, v1 and v2, that belong to the intersection. And the big question is whether their sum also belongs to the intersection. Interesting question. Well, if these two vectors belong to the intersection, it means that each one of them belong to the one subspace, but also to the other. In particular, these two vectors be both belong to the first subspace. So their sum belongs to the first subspace. By the same token, both of these vectors belong to the second subspace. So their sum belongs to the second subspace. Why? Well, because each of the subspaces is closed under addition. So I'm using that linear property of those subspaces. So we have just concluded that V1 plus V2 belongs to the first subspace, because each one of them is, does, and it also belongs to the second subspace, because each one of them does. So if it belongs to the first and the second, then it also belongs to the intersection. And there you go. We have just shown that the intersection is closed under addition. And you can similarly argue, even though it's even simpler, that it's closed under multiplication by numbers. Therefore, it is a linear subspace in its own right. So, unions aren't, intersections are. And I just want to make one final point in this video, which is to connect it to an earlier discussion. If you recall, in an earlier video, let me erase it first and then remind you of the earlier video. Here we go. All right, so in an earlier video, we discussed a linear subspace in R3 that was described by this, let's say, pattern. The second entry was zero, and the last entry was three times the first entry. But when we were having that discussion was before we learned to express linear subspace in this very visual, uh, direct way. We did it slightly differently. We would denote a common element in that uh, space by A, B, C, and then we would write down the property that characterizes this, these, the elements that belong to that subspace. And in the case of this subspace, we had to write down two properties. We had to say that B equals zero, 
And the other property that we wrote down is that 3a equals c. The way we wrote it down was like this. 3a minus c equals 0. So what was a little bit different about this subspace is that it took two conditions to describe it. And then we said with a curly bracket that these conditions had to be satisfied simultaneously. So now in the context of the discussion that we just had, what's really going on here is number one, we're using AND on the properties. What this curly bracket means is that this property AND this property had to be satisfied. So that's one way to connect that earlier discussion to the discussion we just had. But to put it differently, what this subspace is, it's the intersection of two other subspaces, one of which is characterized by having zero as the middle entry, and the other is characterized by third entry being three times the first entry. There you go. So you can think of these more narrow subspaces. And in just a little bit, we'll be able to exactly quantify what we mean by a narrow subspace. That will lead us to the, to the discussion of dimension. But these more narrow subspaces are intersections, that's why they're smaller, more narrow, are intersections of other linear subspaces. That's a very good way of thinking about it. So to summarize everything, but now in terms of talking about properties, when we're discussing properties that characterize linear subspaces, if we look at elements that satisfy one property or the other, the result is a property that does not describe a linear subspace. But if we AND them, the result is the combined property, the property that satisfies, the property that equals this one AND this one. The result is a linear subspace. So once again, a union of two subspaces is typically not in any way a linear subspace in its own right. And the intersection is, and that's very important.